Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. I'm James, in case you're new here. And I do little photography adventures. This video is going to start with a little lunch bike ride run down to the pond over here. Uh, because it just rained. And it hasn't rained in months. A water crossing. That's what normally happens here. When it rains, it floods. That wasn't really anything compared to how it normally floods, but I'm just super excited to have water finally. I just got here and there's some herons out there perfectly perched. Look how much more water there is. So much more and that was just one little rain. We need so much more. I'm gonna pull out my Pentax K3 Mark III and take a picture real quick. This is a two-handed job. I have to be careful walking here because the other day I walked all the way down here and then a little water snake scuttled by me. I hadn't even noticed. So here's my camera. There they are. And that white heron is, that's like the third fish in these last 30 seconds that's caught. Little tiny fish. Gobbled right up. So I'm going to try to get some of that action right now. I got so carried away right in the moment that I forgot to say what cameras I'm shooting with. So I have my Pentax K3 Mark III and the birds flew away. So that's over for now. <laughs> and uh, I also have my Fujifilm X-E1 again. Well, it's not mine, it's Kevin's. An adapter to use my Pentax Auto 110 lenses. So here, this is the 70 millimeter 2.8. They're all 2.8. There's no way to change the aperture. So they're always on 2.8, and uh, we're gonna try that. The light is just way prettier in the mornings. But with the clouds, we're still getting a little bit of kind of cool effect. And anyway, it's all for fun. All during my lunch break anyway. We're out here now on day two. We, I ran out of time, lunch break on day one. And we're starting off bright and early in the morning. And I got this beautiful moon, crescent moon, just a sliver of the moon and sunrise. I'm trying to take pictures of it right now with the Fujifilm. Uh, which with the 70 millimeter on APS-C, this is what, like a hundred and something millimeter equivalent. I can't even really see it on the cell phone. There it is. Crescent moon right there in the middle. Just a beautiful little gradient from the sunrise. Nothing beautiful in the foreground, unfortunately, but I think it'll still be a pretty shot. One thing I am noticing about the Fuji X-E1 is that this exposure compensation dial is super easy to bump accidentally. And I was wondering why all my pictures were overexposed. This has happened to me several times now. You just have to keep an eye on it and make sure that you uh, dialed it in the way you want. We are just moving along nicely here. And look at that. You can barely see it. Got some really interesting skies. Ooh. And I hear a hawk. I don't see a hawk. It's hard to find open enough spaces to really see sunrises and sunset where I'm at, but we're going to try anyway. Get a picture of that. Unfortunately, I can't really capture the full grandeur of the sky right now. It's just kind of like too low in the horizon, the trees. It looks cool, but I can't find a composition I like. But I did find that hawk. So, we're going back with this guy. Unfortunately, it flew off. It didn't like me getting too close. I wasn't even that close. Uh, so it flew off, and then unfortunately I was in the wrong uh, mode. I was an aperture priority because I wanted to get some still shots first at some low shutter speeds to get low noise. It's still quite dark out here. 
uh, but then it decided to fly off and my shutter speed wasn't fast enough. But I still think it's just kind of like a cool environmental shot, not necessarily like you can really see much detail in the bird. Here's the obligatory picture of the bike. I got these rocks precariously stacked up. <laughs> it's gonna tip over any second. I think this will be a cool shot. Yes, yes, water, finally. <laughs> when this is full, it'll be up to here, which is, you can't really see the depth on the camera, but this is several feet up from the bank. Maybe a good four feet. That whole area back there will be covered. But this is way better than it was. We have some interesting colors with these really orange-red leaves and the green starting to come up, the green grass, and then the lake is covered with this silt, I think just because it's kind of been a dirty lake for a while. <laughs> and then the sun blasting through. So we'll capture a few frames here and then move on. The color is going on right now with this pool and this rock, which looks kind of gray, but it has this orangey bits in it. Very pretty. The blue sky over here, orange sky over here, the water. I'm gonna try to capture some of that magic. Maybe it goes without saying, but I really like to play with perspectives. So often when I catch something, I'll be catching it, you know, at eye level because I'm walking or biking by. And that's good to take too. But then if you kind of play around with the different perspectives. You can get totally different shots uh, that may or may not work better for you. This tree is asking to be taken a picture of. The sun is just starting to peek out behind those trees, so it's just highlighting part of it. That little selective highlighting is really attractive. Oh, we got some water in front. Nice color in the skies. This will be good. So it's worth some time to briefly talk about using the Auto 110 lenses on a Fujifilm. So uh, these lenses are not designed to cover the APS-C format, the full-size sensor. The Auto 110 uh, film was a smaller film about the size of Micro Four Thirds, but they do cover to a varying degree, depending on which lens, the APS-C format with just a little vignetting. So I think this 18 millimeter looks like it vignettes a little bit just from looking at the back of the camera. The 70 millimeter does a little bit better. It represents some really cool lenses, very unique looks, and they're pretty affordable. Occasionally you can find a group of the 18, the 24, and the 50 together for 50 bucks or something around those lines. Um, I ended up getting a super good deal on these and they were essentially free. Um, I think I paid about 30 or 40 dollars for the 70 millimeter just because I wanted it so bad. But the other ones I got for pretty much free. An important thing to note though is they do not uh, you cannot change the aperture. The, the Auto 110 system, the aperture would change in the film camera, so these lenses don't have an aperture mechanism. Some people have developed little slips of thin metal or paper that they can slide into the back so they could effectively change the aperture, but uh, I just shoot them wide open all the time and I think most people, that's what they do. But I think as you see, they're surprisingly sharp, look good even on APS-C, a lot of flavor, a lot of uh, cool style to them. Isn't it like Chris Nichols, who gets made fun of every time for taking pictures of puddles? <laughs> but who could resist that? <laughs> Ever the opportunist, I found this pleasant composition, and then there's these dragonflies, and now they're not going to do it. But they're flying about it, and if I time it just right, I might be able to get one in the frame and just add a little something to this. This is one of my favorite shots, but it only happens when there's water in here. Look at that reflection. Well, the 70 was too tight and the 18 was too wide. Should have brought my 50 and my 24. There's really no reason not to bring because they're the size of this. So it's uh, not for lack of space, but just didn't really think about it. But you can bring several lenses if you buy the 110 lenses. Well, I think that will make the end of the video. Thanks so much for joining me on this trip. This will be the last of the Fujifilm videos. 
I'm gonna send it back to Kevin next week, but you'll see a review on the Snap in his channel in about, I don't know, however long it takes me to edit it. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good at uh, having a regular cadence or anything. But anyway, thank you again for joining me. We'll do some more adventures. It won't all be in this backyard of mine. Okay, take care. Until next time, happy snapping.